Hello, this is Annette with Project Refine Life. Welcome to my channel and this unboxing of Remembering the Sweet Fool Tarot. This deck is by Trisha Murray and I ordered this right at the beginning of the month. It really didn't take that long considering we had just got done with the holidays and it had to be shipped and go through customs. I'm excited about this deck. This is just beautiful. I first saw this deck on Kasha's channel over at Tarot Map and I fell in love immediately with the beautiful tones within the deck. Oh, I am so excited. Oh, it's numbered. So I got 140 of 350 and it's signed by her that is so cool i i don't know why but i just did not expect that it came with a few cards so it's her little business card with a little thank you i guess this is the empress oh my goodness and another piece of art i'm assuming from i don't know if this is oh this is from forest of precious twigs she also has this deck that are just these little words on these small little um cards and i should have got this deck when it was available the forest of the precious twigs because i always like the art i never got it it's not available anymore she still does have the little words available i don't know maybe maybe not because shipping is a little pricey because it's coming from i don't even know where she lives um i just i just saw that it said customs all together between shipping and the price of the deck. The price of the deck is $63.72 on Etsy, and then shipping was $23 in some cents, so it came out to $93.85, which is one of the things that kind of stopped me from ordering it for a bit, so I sat on it for a little bit. I saw Kasha's um, sharing this deck in one of her videos. I don't think it was even a walkthrough but I saw her sharing this deck and then I looked into it and I thought, oh wow, pricing or the shipping costs are, you know, it's expensive and I don't know. So I thought about it for a little bit, but I kept going back. I, I really loved the art and the overall feel of the deck. So these are the backs. It has these really big um, corners, these big softening of the corners within the deck, which leads you into this overall softness oh look at that okay so let's just dig right into this deck here's the guidebook and there's nothing in the back let's see in the front she does have a few words there but to be honest it's so light i did put my glasses on because i um I glanced at this and it, I saw that the words are really, really small. So it looks like almost like poetry here. Um, let's see. Yeah, it, there's not much to the guidebook. It looks like, like it's a little bit of poetry for each card. Each card is has a full photograph picture, has a little, little poem type thing here. These are the majors same thing for the minors so it's it's that way all the way through so there's nothing else to this little book there's no spreads there's no big introductions there's no like how to use the deck let's go ahead and take a look at the cards these are the backs let's compare it to a regular size tarot deck so it seems to be a little bit oh no it's pretty much the same size there's very slight difference on the edge it's a little bit wider and that's it. Same height, just a tiny bit wider than your standard RWS. From what I understand, this is a RWS base deck. Ooh, look at that. Okay, let's just let's just start. So I'm just gonna flip through as I'm taking in these beautiful, beautiful cards, and then we'll try to find some pairings for it.
Okay, so looking through the deck, I was surprised in a sense that, and thinking that if you have a basic, or if you have an understanding, I should say, of the RWS, not to say that this deck wouldn't be for beginners, if this is the deck that calls to you, then by just that alone, you'll learn tarot because it means something to you. So you could take this with a, you know, tarot book, a, a basic tarot book and, and get to know the tarot. It doesn't matter whether or not it's a beginner deck or not. But if you have that basic understanding of the RWS, I think you can see within the images what and how it relates to the RWS. There's a few cards here that really called me. I've noticed that this image here is used through um, the Queens and a few other cards as well. And it almost feels to me like this elder in a sense or an ancestor um, kind of calling you or bringing you into a deeper wisdom. And I understand that she made this little bird and this little bird was the motivation for making the deck. And I think this little bird is so cute. And I love this Empress where it's just there on this little delicate daisy that looks almost as if it has seen better days in a sense, but still being within this beautiful, light, soft energy. Really, really pretty. There was a couple I like the Emperor. Um, there was a couple here. The Hierophant I really liked. I, I can completely see the Hierophant there. Uh, the Lovers, again, was another one that I was like, oh yeah, I see it. The Chariot as well. You've got that forward motion going here. Here's your Justice. And it looks here like this has made somewhat of like this evenness this balance here and then you have the bird up on top of her as well and i'm sure there's some little images here it almost looks like there's a face up there and i know that's probably just a coincidence but to me that's what that's what i'm gathering from just looking at the image and i think this is one of one of those decks that i'm gonna pull out my magnifying glass and take a deeper look at oh the hermit this is really pretty. That one little bird just being in the depth of it all and just taking time away. So pretty. I love Fortitude and it reminds me of the uh, Circle of Doors Tarot. And I'm just going to show you the backs because it's very similar as you can see. So that is the um, Wheel of Fortune within this within this deck and this is the back of the cards as well. So that's very similar right there. Um, so pretty, I really love this. I love, and that was one of the things that brought me to this deck, strength. I can completely see this. You have these two, it looks like almost like flowers holding up, providing this ability to rise up. That's really, really pretty, but anyhow, the nature of this, just all of the softness within this and this feeling of winter. I get this feeling of winter within this deck. That's why I was like really anxious <laughs> for this deck to arrive because I was like, don't let winter go away. I need it because I'm in Arizona, so we only get a little bit of it. Um, but I love this. This is the hangman. And as you can see, there's all kinds of things hanging. So there's all kinds of different perspectives that you can gather, especially if you're amongst a few. Now this right here, this death card, I found it really interesting because to me it looks like like a shedding of the skin, like it like the skin was peeled away from the hand and that's left or maybe an imprint of the hand, but the way that it's torn like this, it looks like like the palm, like like the skin, the first layer was peeled away. And so that is the death that is the the shedding of the skin in a sense within the death oh 
that's pretty. Temperance, I like that. She's got this little thing here going on within the cat and the third eye and the birds on top, really cute. And that reminds me of my neighbor's cat. The eyes are different, but still, I love that cat. Um, the devil, I love how they've tied these two sticks together. They're obviously not from the same branch and they're being held together by this red string. And red string means a lot to me, especially within my practice. Uh, the tower, it looks, it looks kind of like an egg, but I don't think it is because there's no uniform shape to the egg, but everything here is being pulled out. So it's a destruction. If it is in fact like a nest and the little birds up on top, then it's like a destruction of pulling away of that home, that, that structure. Um, the star, I just love that. That is so pretty. Um, the moon. I'm not going to go through every card and, um, you know, really have a deep conversation about it, but I did want to talk a little bit about the suits. So, um, looking here, the heels, hills, oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I just taught a yoga class and I was talking about heels and I have to be very specific because sometimes if I'm kind of zoned out while teaching, I'll say hills instead of heels. So hills are the pentacles. And then you've got cups representing the cups. And then you have sticks, which are representing the wands really nicely done. And then points representing the swords. So here we have the ace of points. Really pretty. I'm not quite sure what the structure is in the back, but it's really pretty and I love the way that everything is leading up towards the energy of the sky of something higher two of points I love the feathers and I'm saying I'm not going to go through each one but here I am but there's a couple of them that I want to discuss now this these are skulls little bird skulls here so I found that one interesting which is the five and then I noticed here within, is it this one? No, it's not this one. Um, there's, here we go. Here's some little uh, straight pins right here being used for points. So there's some different objects that she used. This looks like incense to me, eight of points. Very, very nice. I like it. I like it a lot. The 10 of points. I like that. Everything's Everything's pointing up. They're all in alignment there in a sense, as aligned as they can be, right? Um, you know, the uh, you have this, let me get into my thought a little bit more. You have this down below and everything's like together and in not alignment, but you know, it's like it's at the completion, you know, there's nowhere else for it to go. And then you have these in the background too. I don't know if you can see these in the background, but that's there as well daughter of points sun i like the sun i like that little <laughs> energy that flow of energy there queen see these queens are really really pretty i really love this you've got the feathers behind that uh, represents another element of air within itself uh, there's the king i like it i like the energetics of it. I like the overall flow within the deck. There's a flow here. The Ace of Sticks. I really like this Ace of Sticks. It almost looks like Palo Santo to me, like when you first light it. Palo Santo never stays lit for too long. But look at the burst within the light around it. I really like that. Okay, this is the Ace of Sticks. Oh no, Two of Sticks. I think it's coming up. No, I think it's in the next suit. Um, three. And I know I'm going through them all again. I'm not going to comment on each one. Six of sticks I really like. I like that it, they formed a ladder with this. And, you know, there you still have your, your creativity, your fire. Seven of sticks. I like the eight. I like that the momentum is pushing everywhere, not just in one direction, but everywhere. Uh, nine, cool, 10. Okay, um, this I like. So here you have the nine where it's kind of frazzled, right? Um, the little bird or like, 
a different image of the bird rather is here. And you can see where it's kind of, it just doesn't feel very, very nice. Now here, I'm not saying that this feels nice, but it feels like, okay, everything's together. These sticks are obviously burned and there's a circle around them. Again, we're using that red thread. Now for me, that means, for me, that means like when you're going to be doing healing or something, you put some red thread around your wrist and that offers you some protection, some red yarn. Um, so I feel like, you know, these, this is at its completion. It's done. They're burned. It's over. And they're in a circle. That thread is holding it together and just keeping it um, in one place. Uh, daughter of sticks. Sun. Queen, again, I love that lovely figure for these feminine type energies. King of Sticks. This is really pretty. This is the Ace of Cups and it looks almost like a shell and it states, I think, I allow myself to receive. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. That is so cool. Two of Cups. Oh, that's really pretty. Three of cups. I think this, the cups is just, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay, this was the one that kind of made me do a little bit of a double take. Four of cups. Now, what, <laughs> what got to me is that there's faces in here. You see these faces in there? And they're holding up these vessels. Not so much cups, but vessels. And kind of looking at one another. Um with eyes closed though. I don't know. I'm going to have to spend some time with this one and read the poem involved for that one as well. Five of cups, six of cups. I like that little looking into the future kind of a thing, that tunnel vision. Uh, seven of cups, focus, focus. Eight, really pretty. Oh my goodness. This is so pretty. And 10 of cups. Uh, that is beautiful. Now, this reminds me of womb healing ceremonies or um, right of the womb. And we put roses or flowers into this round vessel and um, have that ceremony. Uh, Daughter of Cups is so pretty. I love the crystals involved here. This kind of gave me the crystal vibes, um, crystal skulls, tarot vibe. Um, Son of Cups. This is interesting. It's almost like it's created a, or it is a funnel. It looks like a cup, but it's, it's obviously some kind of a, a funnel that's flowing through. Another beautiful queen. Look at that. Look at the richness of this. So much beauty. Oh my goodness. King of Cups. Ace. Let me see. Was there anything else that really called me? Three of Hills. This one was interesting to me. I'm going to have to read up on that one. Four. Um, I like that these are um, bells, obviously. Oh, that's a pie stone. Looks like a pie stone. Um, something that uh, is used within the monarchy rites. Um, let's see here. Six of heels. Um, that's, that's really pretty. I love this. You could tell that this person has, I don't know what she does or whatever, but it seems to me like a very shamanic type of practice, which I, I appreciate. I like that. I'm looking at this and, and gathering from this. And these are those little birds. See, she made a bunch of those little birds there. This with the pomegranate, really pretty. And this, oh my goodness, that is just beautiful. Again, the Queen of Hills. I love all these queens. They're really pretty. But this one, the King of Hills. Oh my goodness. What power, what dominance within the earth. That just looks beautiful. Like this is, this is the knowledge within this particular area and the grounding. Very, very pretty. So everything about this, the earthy tones, the gentleness, it sounds like it has a beautiful voice. It sounds like or it looks like to me like it's going to speak gently, um, maybe at times a little firm, but with a very guided and um, unharmful type of voice. When I saw the deck, what it immediately reminded me of, let me grab it. 
when I first saw the deck, this is the deck that it reminded me of. And this deck is extremely, extremely special to me. I really love this. This is Kai Taro Love. And this gave me the same type of vibes within these two decks. I don't normally work with tarot decks side by side. However, this would be one of the instances in which I would because the vibe is so beautiful put together. I think they're going to be great. Um, this is more of like a spring type vibe for me. And this falls more within winter. So I think that within itself is going to be a great opposition to have within my collection. However, I want to work with these two together because I just think, I think these were kind of like meant for one another. These are so pretty together. And this deck, I really treasure this deck. This deck, um, I, I traded services with the creator of this deck for the box. Um, and I'm not going to discuss what kind of services, but, um, it was nothing weird or anything like that. It was just a very um, personal interaction with her. So I, I really appreciate this deck. It is, it's beautiful for me because I got to know the creator a little bit differently than I know other creators at, the, at that point. So that was very special for me. So I brought out some decks to pair it up with. And the first one being the Energy Archaeology Oracle. I love the Air Energy Archaeology Oracle, um, but I thought that these two together could be another one of those very spirited type of connections where you're working with this beautiful, it's almost like this very spiritual type of, a, of existence within this deck is, is what I'm getting from it, is what I'm being kind of filled with at this moment and the energy archaeology is all about what's going on within the bones within your structure um, I think these two will will be really really good together why is that backwards I always find it interesting when I find cards that are backwards because I don't purposely put um, reversals into my decks I just I just know when to read it as a reversal so I don't really need to put them any other way that's just me um, that's just what I do and this is the land sky oracle I thought this would be really really good together look at these oh yeah look at this this is like this beautiful spiritual connection all the way around when you're dealing with these yogic philosophies plus the spiritual energy that I'm gathering from remembering the sweet fool. I think that these are going to be lovely and they're both very nature based, very soft. You have very soft color here, these watercolors. And then these images, it, it looks like it was like photo plus some um, type of, I don't know what, because I don't know, I don't know how these things are created. All I know is that I like them. So I'm not, <laughs> by far, I am not one to talk to you about art and how it's created and all that stuff. That, I'm, that's not, that's not what I do. I just know what I feel. All right, let's look at the next one that I brought out. This is the Nature and Soul Yoga Wisdom cards. And again, I'm a yoga teacher, guys. I do Reiki, I do healings and stuff. So I'm going to have a lot of these kind of cards within my collection. But I thought, yeah, yeah, these will work. These will work. I think I kind of like the... Um, land sky maybe a little bit better but it just depends on what type of reading I'm doing and why I'm working with this particular type of energy today but I can I can see it but I think I like land sky and the energy archaeology a little bit better I think it'll flow a little bit more so let's look at the next one and I think 
I think you guys probably knew that this would come out. The Death Doula. I love the Death Doula. One of my most favorite decks ever, ever, ever. These are the backs together. Yes. Okay. I can I can feel it. I just got a um I just got this energy dynamic kind of rushing through me with these two. Let me go ahead and put this in the middle here. I should have been doing this all along, but I didn't. Sorry, guys. Okay. I like this. I like this. I like the I like what I'm feeling from this. This feels extremely complete. This feels extremely spiritual. I really like this together. This is so good. This is so good. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna love that. The Death Doula, you know what? I cannot give enough praises for the Death Doula. This is one of my favorite decks ever, 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 ever. I love this deck. Okay, so the next deck, sorry about that. I'm, <laughs> I'm hitting the, um, the little stand in which my camera is held or my phone is held. Okay, this is the Mantra Oracle. And I thought that maybe just based on the softness of the art and then this overall feel within the two that maybe these two might work together and i do like these it'll it'll liven up the reading just a little bit and i'm okay with that i like the overall feeling this overall awakening this reading i think that'll work well together i i'm not mad at it i think it works I like it. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. And this is it. This is the last of my pairings, guys. So after this, I'll have to follow up with you guys later and let you guys know um, what I think of the deck and which ones, which pairings work for me. So this is the Kantiki Oracle. And this, it says right here, an ecological spiritual guide for creative prompt decks. This is, I love, I love this deck. It's beautiful. I wasn't able to complete the whole year's worth of the Kantiji Oracle. And I don't know if it's just because I got too busy or the commitment. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is, but I really like this deck. It's really good. Now, I think that this connection is, this is really going to be nice. This is going to be deep. That's what it feels like to me. And I think that even though this feels like more of a winter deck to me, I think that I'll be able to carry this into like maybe um, spring. But remember, in spring here, it starts getting a little hot because I'm in Arizona. So things start getting hot. But see this right here in the tunnels of our ancestors this feels like an ancestral type of voice like this beautiful tuning into nature and to everything that exists around us like all the wisdom that we have that surrounds us on a daily basis if we just tune in the moss cauldron magician um this is the Claving Glacier with the Magician and King of Points. I think that's really going to work well together. So, guys, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being here. Oh, I, I almost cheated you guys. I'm so sorry. I really didn't want to... Um, I really am not prepared yet. I, I still need some bonding with this deck. So I'm not going to shuffle the deck. You can see that at a later time, but um, let me just do this because I haven't cleared the deck or anything yet. I just, this is not a reading. I just want to give you an idea of what this deck will, will look like when you're reading with it. Ah, the Eight of Sticks, look at that. I liked that one. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, guys, I'm going to just say something right here. I have my glasses on to do this reading. I do have my blinds closed because 
the sun is really bright at the moment, but I am having to take my little magnifying glass out because the words are really tiny. So you're gonna have to wear your glasses, have bright light, or do like me and have your magnifying glass. I'm not gonna let small words get in the way of me working with the deck because it's not the deck's fault and I would be missing out if I just based it on that. So eight of sticks, go, go, go. This is the moment if you don't know. That's short and sweet, but I think, I don't know what the rest of it is like, but I will follow up with you guys and let you know how I'm working with this deck and what's going on and what I'm feeling from it and all the things. So thank you so very much for being here, for being part of this, for taking a look at it, for considering <laughs> my opinions and thoughts. And this again is remembering the sweet fool, the same creator that created the precious twigs. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful day from my heart to yours. I will see you later.